Hi, Star Wars. This is Dr. Jackie B here. Uh, GG to some. Um, thank you for tuning in. Uh, today we did have our meeting with the representatives from Towson University regarding what's involved in establishing a scholarship or scholarships uh, at uh, through the university uh, uh, as a MIMU alumni. And um, Brian, uh, who's the Vice President of Institutional Advancement, uh, shared um, three or four important points with us today. Uh, one, there are two different types of scholarships. Uh, some of the, what's involved with the criteria, um, limits and restrictions, and how soon we can get this thing going. So, First, he shared that there are two different kinds of scholarships. Uh, one is called an operating scholarship, and the second one is an endowed scholarship. An operating scholarship is uh, you, you give some money and you set up your criteria and you say, I want to give out, you know, $500 scholarships for uh, to hire many students. And the money is spent and the scholarships are awarded until the money is all gone. There is not any interest uh, earned on the money. It's, you know, as the money's there, it's given out. It's called an operating scholarship. And you, you, you do have the option of every year contributing to the operating scholarship, just knowing that you don't really build any interest on it. And when the money, if there's no money there, no scholarship is given. The second kind of scholarship, and the scholarships are not mutually exclusive. We can have both types, and I'll talk about that in, in a second as well. The second kind of scholarship is endowed scholarship, and that starts with a minimum of $25,000 that we have contributed to the university. And then once that's there, the, it's invested in it and in, into in, in the pool of, of investment money from the foundation. And then we begin to earn interest on that money. And that is the money that is actually awarded for scholarships. And you need a minimum of $25,000 for that uh, to happen. Uh, Brian recommended $30,000 based on the way that the income and the interest is earned so that we can be even begin as early as 2025, awarding money from the endowed scholarship. However, if you wanted to get money immediately starting uh, this fall, for example, fall 2024, we can uh, set up an, uh, an operating scholarship. Now, and we can do both at the same time, by the way. Uh, Brian recommended and reminding us that we still have a little over $2,600, I think, sitting in an account from the funds that we had raised uh, to go towards the National Pan-Hellenic Council uh, tribute. And, uh, of course, we were, you know, being Deltas and being Mew Mew, we, raised, we outraised everybody else and, and uh, met our goal and exceeded our goal. So we still had some funds for that from that and and i mentioned years ago that we got to get back to talking about what we're going to do with this money so now we're talking about it and his recommendation was that we use that money to maybe give away uh two scholarships uh thirteen hundred dollar scholarships scholarships in the fall this fall uh coming and so that we can kick off um our, our 50 year um anniversary in, in a big way um, and we can do, we can hold events around if we wanted to, to do that and, and, and do whatever we like to do if we wanted to, uh, to, 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 to call attention to what we are doing. So, another thing that we talked about was the criteria and, and preferences because the question was raised, well, you know, how do we make sure that a Mimu Sorbor gets it? The only thing that Brian made us aware of, one important thing, was that you cannot give out a scholarship using uh, race and gender, and that the person, the organization giving the scholarship, providing the funds, can also select whoever's going to get the scholarship. Of course, that was a bit uh, um, surprising to hear. Uh, however, we can put in place uh, once we set up our criteria, we can put into place preferences. Uh, one thing we can do by saying we want uh, it to be a a member of Mimu chapter, 
we can also say that if a new member is not available this year to meet the criteria, we can maybe say we want a member of a D9 organization uh, to be the, the second preference. And so we can put things into place once we draw up the, mem the MOU, Member of Understanding, about what we want in place for our scholarships. And um, um, but that was kind of surprising to hear. The other way we can have impact on who actually gets it is that once we set the criteria in the university, we're automatically generate a list. And we can look at uh, the the uh, qualifications of the people on that list. They'll give us without the names and the race and gender, all those little identifiers, and look at what who these people really are, uh, meeting our criteria and everything else. And then we could rank them. You know, we could rank them. So um, keep that in mind as we work on developing committees uh, if we want to move forward with this. And I think that it's the major points that were covered today. And I uh, cannot say enough for having uh, so more uh, Edna Primrose on on, uh, on the call today. He was able to share her own experiences in setting up a scholarship in honor of her mother, as well as the path that she chose. And, and she did choose the mixed approach. And, uh, uh, and we appreciate that, and also because she is the president of the uh, of the foundation board. Uh, thank you, Edna, and uh, also Felicia, uh, Tanya, uh, Vanessa. Your expertise. I know you, you said something with your mic today, but you were online today, and you kept help to keep Brian on the uh, straight and narrow, since he knows you know uh, what he's talking about. And uh, 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 Donise and Arlene, uh, for your questions, you know, they bring insight. All of you participated and, and, and raised your questions and uh, help us to see the possibility of what can be and, and how it can be. So all of you that were on the call today, uh, thank you. And I hope you've you know, shared some of this information back with your line sisters. And the next step for us is going to be having a little committee form so we can work on this and bring it back to to all of you again so if, you, if you're interested you can call me text me my number uh or uh, email me my telephone number 443-769-8588 uh, or you can respond to to this message and uh, so wars uh we will be the first sorority to do this on campus and you know that's that's how we do things uh, we are Mew. thank you for your time love you much